It's the all new iPhone 14 Pro Max, and it's time to discuss my thoughts on this iPhone, some of my complaints about it, as well as the upgrades from the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Is it worth it? And do you really need a new iPhone? Do you really need it? Welcome back to the YouTube channel, friends. My name is Brian, and it is just great to see you here once again. And it feels like just a year ago, I was talking about the iPhone 13, and here we are with the iPhone 14. I'm super stoked to get right into this one, but if you did have a moment, that would mean the world to me if you hit that like button on this video. I mean, it's just like right there. And then you can also tap the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. Well, I've had the iPhone 14 Pro Max for almost a month now. I got it in like a graphite gray, dark gray color. I don't really know. It's a boring color. If you saw my cinematic mode film, Edge of the World, that I just put out, you'll be able to see right away that this phone is capable of some pretty crazy stuff. If you haven't seen that yet, click up above and you can check that out. But I'm super excited to dive into this video and share with you a lot of my thoughts on the iPhone 14, especially from a filmmaker's perspective. So let's go and get right into this one and talk about the boring stuff first. What hasn't really changed much from the iPhone 13 to the iPhone 14. As most of you know, I use cinematic mode when shooting most of my films. This is just the mode I prefer. It really does do a pretty good job of emulating what a real camera can do by creating that depth of field and being able to go back after the fact and change where you were hitting focus when you were shooting. But in terms of what's changed between the 14 and the 13, specifically with cinematic mode, there hasn't been a ton of changes to this. When you're shooting in cinematic mode, if you're using the 13 or the 14, changing things like depth and exposure, as well as using the 1x or the 3x camera, that's all the same. Hitting focus and how you change that, it's all the same. You can tap anywhere on the screen to hit focus. You can double tap on a subject and it's gonna auto track that subject. You can also tap and hold on the screen to lock focus on that specific distance from the camera to where you're hitting focus. I've actually covered all of this as well in my iPhone 13 cinematic mode review. You can check the link in the description if you wanna watch that, I would definitely recommend it. Also, when you're done shooting any given in cinematic mode video, you can then go in on your phone and edit this footage, change where you're hitting focus. This all operates and works exactly the same from the 13 to the 14. And from a functionality point of view, I don't really think there's much to be upgraded with this, except when we get into some of my complaints, which we're gonna get to in a little bit here. Just give it some time, I'm getting to it. One thing to note about changing the focus after you've shot a video in cinematic mode is that you can't actually do this once you get it on on your computer, like your iMac or your MacBook. You can do it in iMovie, but if you drop that footage over to like Adobe Premiere or whatever video editing software you're using, you can not actually change the focus once the footage is in those types of programs. And that's just something to keep in mind. So what I found that I do before I even import my footage onto my computer is I go through all of it on my phone and make sure I'm hitting focus exactly where I want to on every clip. Otherwise, once you're editing it all down, you'll have to go back to your phone and do it. I'm trying to save you a little bit of time. Cinematic mode subject masking when creating depth of field is also about the same. It does a pretty good job overall of creating depth, but it still has a hard time with this when you have more details that need to be masked out, such as hair blowing in the wind or things like plants and bushes. In terms of the colors, it's still Dolby Vision HDR. I absolutely love the way the iPhone renders colors. It's fantastic to edit in post, color grade in post. I find myself really not having to make a ton of adjustments to this footage because it already looks so good and it's already pretty close to the final result that I want it to look like. Now it's time to talk about the fun stuff, the upgrades from the 13 to the 14. What did we get as an improvement specifically to cinematic mode? And this is also generally speaking with the camera. First off, we've got a 48 megapixel main camera. Now the 3X camera and the ultra wide camera, those are still 12 megapixel sensors. So don't get your hopes up too high. It's just the main camera that gives you those more pixels, which is great. But I have seen some people, including my wife, Allie, that the 48 megapixel camera is actually a little bit 
too sharp, but you can change this. If you want your main camera to just be 12 megapixels, you can go into the camera app and change that specific setting. There you go. The pixels aren't as sharp and the selfies you take won't show every last little pore on your face or whatever reason you don't like it to be super sharp. I I don't know. Now with cinematic mode, we finally got the 4K resolution option. So in the iPhone 13, you can only shoot cinematic mode in 1080 resolution and it only gives you a 30 frames per second option, which in my mind is not the greatest. Although I was able to create some pretty amazing content. I'm gonna link a lot of videos that I've been able to make with the iPhone 13 below. But now that we have 4K resolution on the iPhone 14 in cinematic, mode. This is quite an amazing upgrade and also you get the option of 30 FPS as well as 24 FPS in cinematic mode at 4K. Now weirdly enough when you're shooting at 1080 on cinematic mode on the iPhone 14 still only gives you 30 frames per second. I will say having cinematic mode in 4K makes a huge difference from the iPhone 13. It's just nice and delicious and I love it. Also a lot of times when you're shooting maybe the horizon is a little slanted so you got to rotate it and even it out and when you do that you got to zoom in a little bit or sometimes you just want to crop in a bit and get a tighter shot of a certain part of the video when you're trying to do this in 1080 it's going to look like hot garbage because you zoom in on 1080 it quickly can become like a 480p image and um don't do that that's not fun one thing to keep in mind that when i'm shooting in cinematic mode at 30 frames per second especially if it's a lot of like the cinematic style films I've put out. I slow that footage down in my video editing software to 80%, giving it a smoother, almost slow motion feeling look. Granted, it's not 60 frames per second, but I just really like the way it looks over even 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. I will also say shooting with the 3X camera is much better quality than on the iPhone 13, and that's just because you still get that 4K resolution, even though it still is on a 12 megapixel a pixel camera and it's fantastic. It's definitely an upgrade. The other two upgrades specifically with the camera are going to be action mode, but this can only be shot at 2.8K resolution. And this just gives you smoother footage if you're holding your iPhone and running with it and trying to get a smooth action style shot. I personally put my iPhone on a gimbal, which is a stabilizer so I can get smoother footage that way while still shooting in 4K and in cinematic mode. Now keep in mind when you are shooting in cinematic mode. Action mode is not also an option. There's just too many modes. We got so many modes that we're trying to do at the same time. You can't have cinematic mode and action mode and 4K. Like, give us some time to figure out how to put it all in one box. I don't know. Apple also introduced to their camera the Photonic Engine, which I think it should have been called the Photogenic Engine because, I mean... <laughs> you know? And this photonic engine just gives you better colors, better low light performance, a little bit better detail in your images. They've just redesigned the way the iPhone renders the images. So maybe that's where like my wife and other people are finding their dislike for the camera and how they're saying it's too sharp. Maybe they're just not used to that image processing. I'm not sure, but um, something to lose sleep over. Take some naps during the day. Think about that at night. So those are some of the main upgrades that we're getting from the 14 that we didn't have with the 13. Again, most of it was specific to cinematic mode. Now let's get into the complaints. And I've got a few complaints that just grind me down and I'm losing life. I'm losing minutes of life every time I have to experience some of these things. And that's okay because I'll make up for it in other ways, but hear me out here. My first complaint with cinematic mode specifically is you cannot lock the white balance or exposure. Now you can adjust exposure, set it darker or brighter when you're shooting in cinematic mode, but it still won't lock the exposure at where you set it to. So if you're panning from like a darker scene to a brighter scene, it's still gonna compensate some brightness for that. The same thing happens with white balance. It does its auto white balance based on its 
its own feelings on the situation, the lighting. It can say, ah, we're gonna warm it up here, but as you pan over this way, we're gonna get a little bit cooler. And when you're calling it cinematic mode, the last thing any filmmaker wants is those types of changes to be happening in real time while you're filming because it looks bad. It's very noticeable from a viewer audience point of view that the lighting is changing, that someone's messing with settings while you're filming. Like, what? Why? Stop. Dude, it's so annoying. And I've dug deep into the camera app. I've Googled it a bunch. I just don't auto anything. I even downloaded the Filmic Pro app to see if you could do anything with that, but you can't use cinematic mode in the Filmic Pro app. Also, Filmic Pro gets pretty bogged down when you're trying to shoot 4K HDR. There's, I guess, some trade-offs there with that, but I'm personally not a fan of Filmic Pro. I do still like the usability of the camera app. It seems like it could be an easy software update. Just give me the option to make it stop. Tim Cook, I'm reaching out to you from the abyss of Apple users. Hear me, see me, believe me, make it stop. Another complaint I have is I found a lot of my footage just skipping. It's kind of like that shutter roll look you get when you're panning side to side and the frames will skip a little bit. I found my footage doing this just randomly when I was doing a push in or push out, it would almost kind of glitch to like a few frames ahead. I'm just looking for smooth shots, which I should be able to achieve and I couldn't find or figure out a reason for it happening. At this point, I think it's just a glitch that's innate within filming on the iPhone. And I found myself being like, well, I can't really use that clip, even though it's great because this glitch is so freaking obvious. Just grinding me down, just where wearing me out, why? Also, a lot of you complained about the lens flare in some of my recent videos, and how does the lens flare look on the iPhone 14? I mean, about the same. In some situations, it seems like it looks a little bit better. It seems like it's emulating more of a real lens, but anytime you're shooting in like direct lights or you've got some type of harsh light hitting the lens, you're gonna get a flare, and there are some moments where it looks pretty annoying or just a random little kind of speck of glitter that are floating on your screen. Other times it's a very obvious flare. You can buy like maybe a little hood for your iPhone to help prevent some of that. I don't use anything like that. That could help, but any lens, even at a professional level, is gonna have some flaring. Take it or leave it. Sorry guys, there's a lens flare. Mask it out in post. If you have that kind of time, that's not something I would do. One thing I did notice when shooting cinematic mode with the 3X camera is that it would actually have a really hard time hitting focus and creating this depth of field, especially when I was just like shooting out far at a distance and not really needing to create depth of field. The phone was still thinking it had to create some kind of depth, which actually made most of the image just fully blurry. I would even go in and adjust the depth, put it all the way up to F16. On a real camera, that's basically saying like most of what's in the frame is in focus. I would still run into that issue. This is obviously not ideal. And what I actually had to do with some of these clips is just just go in after I filmed it and turn cinematic mode off. So it was just the 4K HDR footage that did not have that cinematic mode depth. Last little complaint is actually the HDR mode. As much as I do love HDR and you get that much better dynamic range where you can see what's going on in the highlights as well as in the shadows, sometimes it looks a little too HDR-y, especially when compared to a normal DSLR or mirrorless or cinema camera. Most most of these cameras nowadays do have nice wide dynamic ranges, but when you're shooting like a backlit subject in golden hour, you're for sure like on most cameras gonna have some overexposed areas and this just gives you a more authentic kind of look, in my opinion. When the dynamic range is too high, too much HDR going on, you can start to get into that threshold of cheese that I don't like. It's just not as aesthetic. I also do know that you can actually go into your camera settings and turn HDR mode completely off, but I found in most cases I do like using it. So it's kind of a complaint, but it's definitely something I can fix in post-processing when I'm color grading some of that footage that's just a little bit too much for my preference. 
is upgrading from the iPhone 13 Pro to the iPhone 14 Pro worth it? Well, I don't really think so. As long as you're fine with being able to shoot in cinematic mode only at 1080 and 30 frames per second and not having action mode or the photonic, the photogenic engine, then that's I think really the main components that you're missing out on because the iPhone 13 still can shoot 4K and ProRes and your standard video formats. So you're not really missing out on much more from that. Yes, you do get that 48 megapixel sensor on the iPhone 14, but from A to B on those cameras there, that's really that 4K that you get on the cinematic mode. So whether or not that's worth the upgrade where you just bought an iPhone 13 like a year ago or probably less than a year ago, it may not be worth it. But if you're shooting with anything less than that, a 12 or earlier, it might be something to consider. Now, whether or not this upgrade is worth it is mostly just taking the camera features into consideration. Obviously, by upgrading to the 14, you get that dynamic island, which in my opinion, it's still a notch. I'm not really using it. It's like tappable and stuff, but it's not doing a ton for me. Just be a notch. You're a notch. Don't hide the fact that you're not a notch. I know what you are. Don't be deceptive. I get it. It's also housing a camera and whatever else it's it's doing. You get a little bit longer battery life, a little bit better chip, the Bunny Bionic 16, and a few other upgrade features that you probably won't even notice. Just upgrade to the newest iOS and you'll get a pretty good idea of what it feels like to upgrade to the 14, especially if you're going from the 13 to the 14. So there you go. That's my review, mostly focused on cinematic mode and shooting video and that camera. But when you buy an iPhone, you're really mostly buying a camera anyways. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Are you getting the iPhone 14? Are you not getting the iPhone 14? Have you already got the iPhone 14? Are you still stuck on the 6S or something? Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now would be the time to do it. Now is the time. I've also got cinematic mode presets for Adobe Premiere Pro that are based on my Big Sur trip coming very soon. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for that. A ton of you have got my light and shadows presets as well as my Yosemite presets. So this will be the third pack, all tailored for cinematic mode in iPhone footage. So be on the lookout for that. The link in the description's got all the goodies you need. I also have a podcast. I've got Lightroom presets for desktop and mobile. If you need good music for any of your videos, I also started a music licensing company called Mood Sound Design and the music for every single one of my videos is from Mood Sound Design. Some of it I even produced myself as if I don't have enough time already. I gotta do all of it. Fitness, music, iPhone stuff, videography stuff, photography stuff. And you wonder why I have so many complaints about things. Because you, you're, you just stop wasting my time. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate the ongoing support. I can't wait to see you on the next video, which is coming real soon. Peace. <laughs> That's, we're ending it there. Welcome back to, Welcome back to the YouTube channel. <clears throat> Welcome back to the YouTube friend. Wow, let's try that again. Hope you guys are all okay with my haircut. Actually, it's, <laughs> it's not a haircut. I've just been growing it out and it's just doing what it's doing. I could put the Yankees hat on, but I don't want to. So this is what you get. My computer's a little quiet over there. I don't know. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so is, uh, <clears throat> so, what did Santa Jobs, Santa, <clears throat> what did Santa Tim Cook give us this year under the tree with the upgrades? When filming, when filming on the iPhone, <clears throat> when filming on the iPhone, wow. <laughs>